So we're, we're at the 3rd of January 2024, the first sacred segments of this year. And it's great to be here with everyone and with our main guest, Tracy Ash, uh, as well. Thank you so much for being here. Um, everybody has introduced themselves before I started recording. And I mentioned just before you joined Tracy that um, I'm usually my aunt um, sent me a, a video of a child uh, channeling a, a, a star seed, which is not a, um, something that she would usually do. Um, the timing of it was very interesting. And interestingly as well, synchronistically, I, I wanted to um, read a very, very short extract from a chapter from a book called The Nine Freedoms, uh, written by um, Sir George King, who founded the Aetherius Society. It's a very short, and the, and the chapter is called Interplanetary Existence. And he's talking about the sacred sound, the AUM. And it's simply this, this is the secret of creation. It is the secret of preservation. It is the secret of transmutation. It is the sacred sound. A U M. And I was going to read a short extract from another book um, by the Master Aetherius, a Venusian master. However, I think it would be better rather than reading the practice for us to just do it. So I'm just going to ask you to um, sit with your spine straight and your hands on your knees and start to make your breathing very deep and even and contact a pink vibration representing the vibration of love from above your head and bring it down in a thin band of light, pink light, soft baby pink behind your spine and curl it under the base of your spine and bringing it up the front of the body. So you're seated, we are all seated in, in this loop of pink love energy. Bring it up the front of the body and curl it round the head a second time and bring it all the way to the base of the spine and bringing it up the front of the body a second time and letting it rest there. So we're encased in this double loop of pink vibration, love energy. Detaching from that just for a moment, I'm thinking down into the mother earth and requesting her violet flame of transmutation and protection. Seeing and feeling this, contacting it with our mind and our imagination, the essence of our creative faculty, and asking for permission from the Mother Earth, this beautiful transmuting flame. Seeing and feeling this come up through the lower body and the physical body and the aura, as high as we can imagine into space. Seeing this around our auric bodies, around ourselves as a group, and around the whole planet, transmuting all lower frequencies through our visualization, in gratitude, just releasing this visualization for a moment and thinking up to the source of all light and bringing down a white healing light, a very bright white energy and surrounding the whole planet in this white vibration and coming back to ourselves and bringing it down and merging it in the heart center with the violet flame taking the violet flame and the white light, 
that emerged in the heart, up together into the golden sphere that's above our head, which is our spiritual essence. Just seeing that golden sphere above our heads and offering these two vibrations, the violet light from the Mother Earth and the white light from the heavens, up as a single entity into the golden sphere, offering it gratitude and sacrifice and seeing from the golden sphere golden rain coming through the brain the whole of the aura and extending that visualization to the whole of the earth seeing the earth covered in golden light Just letting it nourish the lower realms of earth. Thank you. Just returning to the breath and, and gently opening our eyes and connecting once again with each other. Okay, thank you for being here, everybody. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand over to Tracy. Thank you. What a beautiful meditation and connection with spirit. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. I think what I'm going to speak about are, of course, current events, which are offering and representing themselves repeatedly as the spiritual lesson, the spiritual lesson, the spiritual lesson that you, we, us all are being called to during this time. Not since 2011 have we seen events merge the earth grid in such a significant way. The same gateways of the earth grid were activated in 2011, Iceland, Japan, and the Middle East. Fukushima, the Arab Spring, and of course, the Icelandic volcanic activity. So this preceding time in 2011 is the precursor of, of course, what we see as the 2012 shift. And what we're seeing now is the reemergence of a cycle of time that was placed on pause during the pandemic. So the events and the spiritual lesson is intense and it is, in, it is indeed designed to be intense, to scramble your connection with your soul, with your free will, your organic timeline, and of course, the destiny that you have chosen as a soul that incarnates, particularly at bridges where time cycles merge. So this element is extremely important, we have an opportunity to correct time itself, to correct the cycles of karma that have been selected by the elite, 
intrinsically entangled with the knowledge, of course, that is here, ancient Egypt, and the entanglement that we have in the West with ownership of sacred knowledge. So there is some entitlement that must be recalibrated, particularly within our spiritual arena, so that we can deeply connect with soul and deeply connect with the gateways of spirit that can hold us during these times of immense distractions, dramas, politics. Within the context of your own spiritual process, your own spiritual practice, are those processes and practices powerfully enough and tangled in the time cycles in the dimensions, in the gateways, in the contact that indeed secures your rightful place in the destiny of evolution of humanity at this time. So as I work with you, the teachings, are the eyes that travel from another time, the time of the great central sun, the time that can, can penetrate our own implanted and faulty programming, psychology, belief systems. And it's through the ancient gateways, the organic ancient gateways, the pre-Diluvian ancient gateways, the stargates. These stargates contain not only contact, but truth. These are the organic libraries of our planet, of our history, that when we are initiated, ignited, activated, and enlightened beyond fourth dimension, beyond rhetoric beyond teachings that have no place in weaving time, time cycles and dimension. This is when we return to understanding why we exist, from where we come from, and how we indeed initiate, activate, our own throne of star, our own throne of power that is written in the stars. And indeed, the integration of a particular stargate within the context of humanity and how that serves the protection of evolution right here and right now, it is of particular importance, those of you who are indeed star seeds, you are being called in the unity of the galactic field of intelligence, where we can indeed expand beyond our own human limitations and act in the boundaries 
and breaking the boundaries of intelligence and time and spiritual force of creation that will always allow us to survive whatever the free will is chosen in terms of humanity. So we, we are facing incredibly challenging times where we must track and trace our own creation story, our own time before time, our own container or throne of power that sits in a conscious history, in a conscious intelligence that builds evolution on this planet and builds evolution on this planet with no harm. A definitive return to the goddess, not Hollywood-shaped goddess, but who the gateway, what the gateway of the goddess is. For me in ancient Egypt, she is the deified one. And there are a particular lineage of queens and priestess that not only hold the eye, vision and seeing, they hold the power and the protection for creation itself. They hold the capacity not only to travel time, but to protect time in all of the four directions. The architecture of the soul is expressed in the architecture of the temples, the monuments and the pyramids that we find here. The invisible throne of the goddess is like the philosopher's stone. We seek it. We need it to conclude once and for all the battle of light and dark on the planet. It is written in the prophecies here, the texts, the scenes, there are answers in terms of our future that are visible to us now. If our own research and our own initiations are not manipulated by false information, there is a general swaying of power during these times as the simulation manipulates, a social media dominates in the false prophets. This is also an initiation that you as a light worker must directly acknowledge and disregard without silence and compliance these are the programs that have been intensifying for the last two decade, decades. It is not the wisdom of spirit to not unveil the truth, to not protect the truth, to not restore the truth. Therefore, the gateways, our own activism, our own action and presence with spirit must 
be magnified, intensified, integrated fully as a new dimension of intelligence, awareness, and truth that belongs on the throne of the gods. We must think like the gods of the myths and of pre history. We must feel like the gods. We must live the myth, the magic of evolution so that we can truly live and love and give. This is the real spiritual mission to enter our spiritual work with nothing to enter our spiritual work with no desire with no manipulation with no vision board with no hefty agenda for success, all of these attachments. Your spiritual work is calling you to reconsider. As we enter into the possibility of a throne, a legitimate star gate, this is where a revolution of change impacts your DNA, your health, your psychology, your intellect, and your capability to succeed where the matrix will not allow you to succeed. This is the true path of enlightenment, the work of light that not only recalibrates reality, but recalibrates how you perceive the possibilities of your own thresholds of reality. And this is when and where we significantly return to the capability to not only vision our incarnation, but to vision our incarnations to come. We choose to incarnate as the eternal flame and protector and eye of all that is light on this planet and across the universe. For vast and infinite cycles of time. For this is the original purpose of pre-Diluvian history where ancient history speaks of paradise on earth, where the gods, of course, walked amongst humanity, shaping and guiding humanity to come. On New Year's Eve, I was called to the tomb of Nefertari. The Hathors are known to be present 
at the birth of a soul. They oversee and they protect and predict the fate, the destiny of a soul on earth. It was this particular chamber that I was called to attend. When I got there, there was emergency work taking place and the chamber was not accessible. Nefertari was particularly full that day. I was fortunate enough to have some of the team that work in antiquities present who know me. And so the cordon was lifted and I entered the chamber that I'd been guided to visit. And I sat in the chamber that depicts every soul's journey of incarnation and reincarnation where the knowledge is written in the scenes and written in the text and written into the tombs. For we are more than the matrix has prescribed to us. When we meet the soul of a queen who has been deified, it gifts us the opportunity to experience the immortal nature of our own soul. This is the purpose of rites of initiation. This is the purpose of enlightenment itself. To travel beyond what we perceive as the limitation of our mortality so that we can stand fearless at the edge of the universe, knowing that in each lesson we are time travelers. And we will always overcome the dark forces of the elite when we are ready, fully free of fear to step into the light over eternal time. We bring eternal time to this fragment of reality that we find ourselves in. And we recognize, like every soul on the planet, the hardship of existence the hardship, the challenges of all initiation that can never be achieved in a vision board for our incarnations, our extraordinary myths. When we reveal ourselves ready, ready, for every lesson that is written on the instructions of the goddess. For she is the one that will always see, always protect your path of life. And for an eternity, will always travel you upon death in her eternal love 
that can never be destroyed. There are two aspects of the goddess that are simply exquisite and so extraordinary as we face the greatest task of destroying evil on the planet as the light workers we are born to be. These aspects, of course, for the great mother and the other aspect is the love, the truth, that is so well protected that in it stands a billion light workers with you because you have chosen the gateway of truth. These times are extraordinary. The Palestinian people have lost everything and have taken nothing into this initiation. Humanity should kneel down in front of that nation as the great leaders of what is to come in, true, in terms of true justice for light, spirituality, and evolution on this planet. May our hearts be truly activated in the compassion of our initiation, not in the rhetoric of teaching where we have not traveled through a real life experience. The knowledge is written within us. All strategy is now void. Over to you. If any of you don't know my work, I'm a channel. And I trained at the College of Psychic Studies. I was headhunted as the future talent, mentored by Susanna McKinnery in around and from the year 1999. And I started work at the College of Psychic Studies. It was my first job. I have an unusual and extraordinary ability to travel time and to bring teachings from the timelines that are relevant to you uniquely at this time. May I ask you, did you and Carl um, know each other? Because I believe Carl studied at the College of psychic studies as well where is carl i'm here yeah we i mentioned this the first we, time you were on yeah, right yes yeah i did a workshop of yours once and i think i had i think i had a one-to-one -one session with you at one time as well um but i remember doing a workshop where we were connecting with the archangels at the time and i remember connecting very strongly with gabrielle at that time in your work. And that's quite a, an interesting old ancient body of work which relates to a site yeah. where there is a full cap and the four directions which relates to those four archangelic archetypes. Those four archangelic archetypes 
you can indeed replace them with Isis, Osiris, Hathor, and Horus. Wow. They bring forward a resource, an intelligence, a psychology, a transformational philosopher's stone, if you like, which rebalances and recalibrates your timeline over many incarnations. So the site at Abu Ghraib, which is just south of the Giza pyramid complex, is the site of my first project. I'm a gatekeeper. I tend to find myself back at the ancient gateways, handling the technologies with the same memories and capabilities of ancient times. I want to um, just let you know that before this um, group started, I was asking, um, you know, what what it what it is that I need to ask, uh, and. Um, I mentioned to the group before you joined that Serapis Bay came in very, very clearly. And um, there was, there is obviously a link there with the Egyptian connection. Um, and, and I learned about, I learned more about Serapis Bay than I, I, I'd known before. Um, the Venusian connection which, which I was unaware of previously. Um, what can you tell me about Serapis Bay? The Serapis Bay connection is slightly problematic. Okay. Because of the purity in which I stand in terms of the teachings of ancient Egypt. So Serapis Bay is very much connected with the ancient site of Karnak Temple. So there's quite a strong highlight there over the East Gateway and the what we could say in the mainstream are the ascension temples of Karnak. Karnak relates to, of course, Nefertari. Um, Karnak relates over multiple timelines equally. So we have Seti the first, Ramesses, Nefertari. We have Akhenaten, uh, then we run into much later 26th dynasty Roman period as well. So there are multiple creation stories embedded at Karna. Could you please describe to me and to us um, what it means to be a gatekeeper? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. In my memories of my ancient incarnations, I've assisted consciously humanity in terms of key evolutionary moments. I've worked in terms of the genetics engineering that is a gatekeeper of sorts within the context of being a metaphysical, a trans-dimensional gatekeeper, then the gateways, the timelines, the gods, the goddesses can be accessed extremely safely. A gatekeeper will always protect and serve the protection of light on the planet. This is one of the reasons 
why I'm extremely meticulous about clean protocols in terms of gateways. So I have a very strong background in extremely complex solving of gateways, of timelines, of entities, of negative forces, of connecting bridges of time, bridges of protection into galactic intelligence that is, of course, more powerful than who I am as a gatekeeper now. And may so I ask, um, sorry, please finish. I was just going to say, let me give you an example. So when I show up at a gate where the metaphysical potential is extraordinary and the ancestors materialize in recognition of the one who has already incarnated and has gained entry to the phenomenal technology of gate ways. So a gatekeeper will transcend the timeline that is currently controlled. When I show up at any ancient gateway across the planet, I have that right of passage as a gatekeeper who is transdimensional, a gatekeeper who is a protector of the organic timeline of humanity and the ancestors recognize it. This has given me access to extraordinary, extraordinary sites. So this is how it works. I don't plan anything. Gatekeepers don't plan anything. They are caught. That's how the story starts. How I show up is synchronized through a series of events that are always led through messages. Then I'm directed to location. And then, I mean, I materialize contact ships, entities, ancestors. I am a physical medium since birth. I did not need to develop these abilities. They came inbuilt, if you like, as my reality as a soul on the planet. That is the legacy, the purpose of a gatekeeper. Thank you for explaining Gatekeepers that. will also be recognized by other gateways. Well, that leads me to my next question. Yeah. In, in terms of how were you recognized by the United Nations and how were you called in and what unfolded in the discussions that you had with them? I was at a conference in New York and I'd been identified on the circuit, Laura, Laura Eisenhower was one of the specialists who recognized that what I was doing was beyond anything that people were capturing on video. However, these are the days of Corey Good and David Wilcock and the control in terms of the community was very strongly managed by them and their focus on misinformation and their focus on misinformation, particularly to do with ancient gateways, Egypt, and of course, contact. So how I end up at the United Nations with an all access entry pass was that at the conference when I 
deliver the video on the East Coast. Someone from terrorism was at the conference and she personally invited me to the United Nations to question me on my capability of contact. It is one of their special interests, by the way. So the experiences that I have as a gatekeeper, they're not contained in my imagination. This is galactic fleets. These are vehicles. These are intelligent dimensions, gateways that respond to my intelligence because I am responding to the intelligence that is communicating with me. So that particular event took me to the United Nations. It highlighted me as a rogue talent in the community who was exposing, exposing, the lack of ethics that we were seeing in the contact community and in the Ascension community largely too. You see, it's quite rare that we can truly materialize what we're talking about. So the work that I do is super advanced. Well, uh, that's what I've always been, Yeah, I've always been interested in materialization. I headed up research at the College of Psychic Studies. I was so truly fascinated, yeah. Because you are so advanced, it's difficult for for most people, myself included, to, to understand and participate in the ascension and, and, and to be of service to you and, the, and to the planet. So what, what can you I, share? I, I disagree as a gatekeeper, I'm recognized by Japan the community work that I do there is extensive. I mean, I've worked with the previous CEO of Sony on spirituality meeting business. That's the level of work that I do. It is extremely practical, logical, and can be implemented wow. in the gateway of life itself. So I've always been interested in how we translate our spirituality. Remember, I'm a businesswoman as okay. well. Well, I, I remember I the first time I saw you. And I saw that in you very much. But I saw I saw so much more. What can we do as individuals and as a group? You're already doing it. You're already seeking. You're already firmly understanding the nature of the questions, the logical sequence in terms of your destiny, in terms of your journey, what you need to personally solve, not generically implant as a simulation of your reality. To be ethical, you may not understand the language that I use, but you feel the energy that I radiate. Definitely. And that changes everything. So I'm at home with everything and everyone, Beautiful. as long as you're ethical. Yeah. Very beautiful. Thank you so much. I feel truly humbled. Um, I Me too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
I want to give everyone the opportunity to ask you questions and to converse mm. with you. So I just want to open it up to everyone. Does anybody? Yeah, I have a, a question because a, a number of times, Tracy, you mentioned organic timeline. You use that phrase specifically. Um, so I'm just trying to understand that a bit more. Is that about? in relation to incarnations or is it something more profound well incarnation is profound <laughs> if we truly engage with our lessons of destiny and set our spiritual power and our spiritual intelligence free I believe the organic timeline is where we consider ethically, responsibly, sustainably the nature of our lessons, the nature of the signature of our soul and why we are incarnating. When we make the time to listen. And when we meticulously listen, then our organic timeline is birthed like the myth and the miracle of the pre-Diluvian account of paradise on earth. Can I ask you what that word means, pre-Diluvian? It's prehistory. Okay. So here there are king lists that account for 32,000 years before the first dynasty. I live on the Medina Habu, it's the oldest ancient gateway here in Luxor, Thebes. The pre-Diluvian history here is a written history in the Temple of Ammon that dates to the 14th century or the 14th dynasty. And that 14th dynasty documents an ancient history that predates the first dynasties of ancient Egypt. These are written records. These are visible scenes. Pre-Diluvian means that the origin of ancient Egypt is much older than conventional history has written or interpreted. Mm -hmm. So we see, for example, here, there is a document on prehistory, which is the foundation of the cradle of civilization and the architecture of the soul. Wow. And it's that history and wisdom that was engaged with by Freud and Jung. This knowledge becomes the foundation of modern psychology. And Freud clearly omits the focus of the soul and the focus of the soul is not just incarnation but is incarnation with the memory of your lives intact and that is indeed what the ancient Egyptians did. Yes. I've got a few questions. Of understanding 
what your existence, what your lives mean. What, what have we missed? Stuff. Say again, please. Huge. Ah. It's huge. I mean, the pre-Diluvian history and those historical records also massively recalibrate our understanding of time, can take down the cabal and the negative forces of those systems. Because, of course, the Kabbal lifted the ancient wisdom. And can we assist in that process? Sure. By becoming initiated. Okay. And what would that entail? By you considering the exact nature. And information that is contained in each of your lifetimes. That is your spiritual work. There is no strategy to this. Surrender to what your destiny truly is. So it's not just a matter of incarnation. It is a matter of enlightenment. And the divinity within humanity at this time. I'm quite an unusual researcher because I not only have a historical background in research, I apply history and merge history with consciousness to generate the solutions for today. So within the context of you understanding, for example, your soul purpose, we must also understand the purpose of the planet and what takes place in terms of the planet's response to our choice in terms of enlightenment. And that's when we can achieve considerable history, the kind of history that the ancient Egyptians left to solve the future of humanity. The temples and monuments were built for now. They wow. are technologies that were built for the future and they were technologies that were built to define and understand the science of the soul. Um, I, I just want to speak about time for a minute in, on the physical <laughs> plane. Um, so in this session, um, I would like, mm -hmm. if everybody is um, in agreement, for us to go over time and spend the ne next 11 minutes answering everyone's questions. And I also want to give um, Carl and Anna the opportunity to, to have 10 minute segments. So I want to go um, half an hour over time and finish at nine o'clock. It's understood if anybody needs to leave. Um, and I understand that people have questions. Shelley has asked a question and also Leo has some questions. So let's spend the next 10 minutes answering. Alexis, I, I may not be able to do mine because I'm, my allergy, this winter indoor allergy, my throat, I'm coughing a lot. So let me see how I feel later. Okay. I just want to, you know, I'm- Sure, we'll play it by ear. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for explaining that, thank you. Okay, so Shelly is asking, how does one learn about the lifetimes? Can someone provide guidance? Where to is Shelly? Shelly, where are she's you? Never, she's away. not showing her she's photo at the moment. She's in Florida. Ah, okay, that's why. Shelly, go ahead. Re I'll, I'll, I'll read your question. Thank you, yes. Shelly. Yes. Blah blah. Oops. Okay, try this. Um, so you said that we could. Um, participate that we could provide service 
and um, by looking at our lifetimes and gleaning the information, the wisdom, um, and how does one do that? By starting with the lifetime that you exist in now. It's logical. As we begin to become more transparent and ethical, the gateways are activated and so too with it, our memories. So how is the initiation and how is the critical internal work that this community must dedicate itself to. So we heal, we stop projecting an entitlement as regards to our spirituality. And we do the work that transforms us. You want to be an energy worker? You have to heal yourself first. Mm -hmm. mm -mm, you said it wrong. Your vibration. Heal the vibration within yourself that is not pure energy work, not pure light work, it's programs. So you need quality structures of training and mentorship and deep and intensive healing where your timelines are traveled, where you are blind, the mentor becomes the eyes, so that you can see your way. And we have to get over ourselves in terms of spirituality and ascension on demand and command. I've done the work, I've earned it. And I've raised the bar for myself when the community couldn't raise the bar for me. We need to do the work. When you talked about accessing the, um, the pyramid as technology, does one do that telepathically? Sure. I mean, you can do it remotely. Absolutely. I uh, generate a lot of remote classes where we are directly experiencing the potency of particular ancient gateways or stargates. Again, the gatekeeper is responsible for how far you travel, for example. So where we experience gateway where we experience breakthrough within the context of our soul work, our own internal work. This is largely connected it, with it, the generosity of the individual who is initiating you. You see, there's a lot of glamour in our community, a lot of self-taught Google searching, which is not initiation. This creates problematic fantasy. I am an energy worker. I am a shaman. I am a spiritual teacher. And of course, we must travel through our own life lessons so that we have earned that right and healed ourselves so that we have the human value the human love, the human intelligence that magnetizes spirit to us. I mean, as an energy worker, my purpose in terms of my service 
if the soul is in deep crisis, i.e. terminal illness, as a gatekeeper, I will ensure either the miracle or the transition of that soul safely. The work that we do should be regarded as highly intelligent and we should take care that we are highly responsible. That's beautiful. Um, before um, Leo asks his questions of you, may, may I ask you, um, regarding self-healing, you talked about uh, the taking the responsibility to do the work and heal yourself. Okay, um, my question is, um, do you mean psychologically, physically, all of the above, and uh, yes, and and how how does one access the healing that one needs? Is it is it is it mentally? Is it mental? No, <laughs> it's everything. I was working with one of my schools today, our transit into genuine ethical healing, it will penetrate all dimensions. It will recalibrate, upgrade our health, our capability to biologically regenerate. This is hugely important within the context of the cabal and what is taking place within the context of darker agendas in terms of health. So our healing must penetrate, reinforce, recalibrate, regenerate, and protect every dimension psychologically Yes, initiating, activating emotional intelligence and a field that is truly grounded, anchored and integrated. So you are sturdy, you are steady. This is not 4D spirituality. We're not meditating to depart our incarnation. We are meditating to exist as souls committed to human life. The soul work we do, the work that we do with spirit, again, multidimensional. I mean everything. As a gatekeeper from the ancestors, mediumship, to trans-dimensional, interdimensional communication. And each of those gateways of communication, transmissions, gateways, time, intelligence, wisdom, protection, a greater intelligence, this is gonna recalibrate you at every single dimension. And this is why you have the reference of the shining ones here in ancient Egypt too, where the progression of the soul path is so meticulous that the enlightenment that is activated is the light body that materializes as physical. So this is why you feel my presence, it precedes my words. It is destined to. Before, before Leo asks his questions, I just want to ask you, are you able to share your video on another time? Um, that we need. We've got so many, I'll be happy to share whatever you want. Okay. I mean, I've got like amazing photographs in the Great Pyramids where people have like pillars of 
indigo lights and they're like super activated in that Syrian gateway. It means one is integrating the goddess. I'm, I'm talking about is integrated. I'm talking about the fleet. The, oh sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, Leo, go ahead. Ask your questions. I, I'm still here, but I'm gonna mute and gonna disappear for a second. Greetings, beloved. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you as well. It's my pleasure to meet you. I have two questions. I could probably come up with more, but for time's sake, I've only come up with two that I feel are important to ask in this moment. The first one is I resonate with a lot of commonality in the way you think and the, your accomplishments and what you have to say about consciousness and the human being and evolution. When I, um, so I, I, I too have experienced quite a bit of extraterrestrial involvement, right. benevolent as well as malevolent beings, but primarily benevolent beings that have been more like masters and teachers along my path. Um, and so most recently I traveled, I felt called to Florida, which is where I moved two years ago. I left for New Jersey for a year and came back again to Florida. When I first moved here, I moved to an area of Florida called Sarasota, which is right on, as you well are you well aware, it's right on a Stargate um, at the Siesta Key Beach. And when I got here, I this wasn't the first time I felt something like this, but I could feel my DNA shifting, my body shifting the regeneration you talk about happening in my in my veins and my molecular structure my appearance even has has changed since being here right. so i know that these these are in fact very real portals i don't fully understand them yet but it's interesting that i was called to one of them and so it i find great fascination with your insights on the stargate systems because one of the one of the um, the manifestations that I currently have on my on my lens is is traveling to the stargates and understanding their purpose, being able to upgrade. And my, my DNA is highly activated, but upgrade my DNA to a point where I can, in fact, utilize them and uh, bring back some of the higher teachings, bring back some of the higher technologies to ground here in Anchor. Yeah, I'm completely with you. You see, this is what happens. There's a tipping point in terms of when a community like this comes together. So, for example, your question lends itself on a teaching level. It reinforces, it confirms, it acknowledges the path that perhaps others are considering but are not quite comfortable yet. I've done a lot of work in Florida, by the way, so I know it. Um, what I feel is hugely important because you're in the States, um, that East Gateway is extremely important in terms of activating a collective shift, transformation, healing for the collective consciousness of the United States and everything that goes with what the United States means in terms of its colonialism that is heavily and deeply rooted in Europe and, of course, the colonialism of the United Kingdom, too. So the Stargates are extraordinarily important um, in, in 
2018, I was called to the Great Pyramid for a vision. And that vision took me into recognizing that there are seven gatekeepers on the planet, seven stargates that should have been, should have been activated. And those gatekeepers should have met. But of course, there was strong resistance over the stargates being activated because this is all connected with pre-Diluvian history, which connects us with precession of the equinox and the axis tilt that takes us into the great central sun, the great galactic realization that we are eternal souls and that we are in a fragment of our eternal intelligence when we choose to incarnate on the planet. So the role of the stargates, I mean, I'm a specialist in stargates. When I show up at a stargate, the wind comes, contact comes. We have a lot of contact at the Stargates, the Great Pyramids, Abu Ghraib. And individuals experience that contact and it transforms them genetically, psychologically, their intelligence too. In fact, one of the witnesses in was, I believe, a seven or eight year old boy who after that particular experience completely refused to be conventional and then he had to be homeschooled. So where we experience the stargates, we have no, atten no attachment to convention which is why our psychology is different, our dreams are different, our service is different. And it can be challenging because yeah. you break every rule and every system. So this is quite important that those who are awakening and those who are in recognition of the eternal nature of the soul and that the true sovereignty of humanity is completely different to that which has been prescribed. Those individuals must generate and build a community. And that's part of my work. I build community. Beautiful. Um, other gatekeepers. I invite contact. And that kind of contact creates a revolution, particularly for the cabal. Yes. Um, so I'll, I'll briefly touch on this just because I feel a kind of a personal authenticity here. Um, I've been followed for over a decade of my life. I was systematically tortured for over a decade. And to this day, I still have a, a, a passenger plane that's assigned to me everywhere I go multiple times a day. I haven't gone anywhere without being monitored for this length of time. And um, I was just, I just wanted to share that with you. I'm not necessarily looking for anything unless you feel compelled to share, but. Slip under the, the radar. I've tried. <laughs> I've tried quite a bit. Slip under the radar. I think that's one of the reasons why I was invited to the United Nations because they wanted to track me. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Is it is it a, is it um a um a case of him molding his consciousness to achieve that? Like. Does he have to? Does he have to alter his consciousness in or in, in in order to achieve what you're saying? I think that 
we can have an organic, sustainable spiritual experience. That's the activation. That's the activation that takes us to a dimension of awakening. What we must do is to break the habit of, for example, entertainment. And so this is why I'm particularly pro organic soul work, where there's no manipulation, no simulation, very careful work that maintains very strong levels of protection. So for example, if you're being tracked, if you're being persecuted, you can indeed respond to that tracking and that persecution, not by entering conflict, but by the protection levels that are generated by existing in your soul. I have particular levels of protection that are just extraordinary. And it materializes instant calm to the perpetrator. I'm also hugely, I'm hugely protected here. My shake, I'm Sufi too. My shake is um, Ahmed Taib. And he is the grand man of Islam in the Middle East. So he is the equivalent of the Dalai Lama or the Pope. When he lives in the horns of Hassel, he lives in the Stargate. David, David, one more question, and then I'm going to hand over to uh, Agni sure. to ask the question. Is that making yeah. sense? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm going to, if I'll, you I'll... want to experience the organic stargates, I mean, your primary stargate is here. I mean, Egypt is the Orion. star gate that is defined in a technology of architecture that compounds and protects not only the stargate, but the stargate of the planet. And it permeates the earth grid, the nodes, the vortexes yeah. that are all assigned to the organic timeline of planet. So it's here. And Egypt has, yeah. certainly, I think, with the um, Western connotations of research, Egypt's been distorted by the Sitchin followers, for example, and the Casey followers, for example. So Egypt is a primary carer, primary carer of the organic timeline of humanity. And Egypt is an isolated cradle of civilization which allowed it not only to retain the pre-Diluvian technologies, but to also develop those pre-Diluvian technologies. It allowed Atlantis to exist when Atlantis was destroyed. It's big. Mm. I've, I've, there I've are often also it, it, it other just... organic, I mean, this is another discussion. I mean, there's, there is a network, an ecosystem of stargates across the planet that will take care of your incarnation on the planet at this time. And this is something that's extremely important. I think it's synonymous in the myth of the great flood, the reality of the great flood. And I think this is also connected with the collective psychology at breaking point and how we enter these arcs of refuge as regards to our enlightenment. And these are safe havens. 
you can't excuse my language fuck with a gatekeeper on a stargate don't even think about it if you want to be trained in that kind of work and i think that's what you really want then you need to come into my mystery schools or come into some sort of educational program or experience here. But the work that I do is not conventional. I would say I'm very much in alignment with that already. Yeah, I know. I know. I got a little bit of like work to recalibrate you so that I can get you deeply into your body. I mean, that's ultimately what it is to really real healing takes us into life and love itself. It allows us to live. It has very little to do with mainstream ideas addictions to entertainment, Hollywood, goddess-like ceremonies, none of those things. You know you live in the States. So yeah. the kind of spirituality that's ultimately rooted in California, we need to go back. We need to go back to the kind of spirituality that is sustainable, ethical, and absolutely genuine. And that's why I was trained yeah. in the studies. That's what's missing in our culture. People want everything as a capitalist consumer and spirituality is not that. The Stargates 100%. will give you nothing. I mean. 100%. Right? Yeah, I fully agree. I, yeah, you yeah. can't fake it till you make it with this. You can't fake it. And I, because I produce retreats and tours for individuals and influencers, any kind of fake in it around anyone who is a gatekeeper and is a real custodian of the gateway, the stargate, is going to unveil and expose that which is fake. And that's what our job is ultimately at this time. And we have to be powerful enough to be able to deliver that level of work. And I think that's what I ultimately do. I offer the inspiration to others. My second, questions. Go ahead. my second question, I'll, I'll be brief. And I want to, I want to thank everybody that's here for giving me the time and patience to be able to do this. Um, the second question as, as a male, obviously, and, I, and I'll, I'll state this preemptively before I go into my question, because I think it matters. Virtually all of my guides and all of the probably 98 percent of the the beings that have incarnated here that are beyond human of intelligence that have fostered me, helped raise me, helped reprove me, heal me and all these other things highly highly activated highly aware highly conscious beings and most of them like i said were were women which which so when you made the comment about goddess i think as a male there's a there's a twofold part to, to, to this because i have worked very diligently at balancing my my feminine aspects with my masculine however i am still in a male body and i still have a male energy signature and, and it can be difficult as a male to know yourself, to know your purpose, and to feel safe and comfortable with your masculinity in the spiritual arena, in the collective sure. global arena, with the changes that are and the changes that we know ultimately need to happen. And so there's this 
obvious there's this layer of surrender to the feminine that the that the masculine has to have we know that that the descending triangle is the, is the female and there's the the female is the is the natural oracle all these things she represents the higher state of being and the portal and the gateways and all these things so as a male it can be easy to feel inferior or to feel like how do i become truly the male presence that i need to be what does that look like how do i honor the goddess again yet still serve in a masculine role and i was hoping that with your deep well of knowledge you could offer something to the men here who probably very much also have this question within okay so you see i'm female but my intellect is all masculine meticulous right the ancient egyptians particularly as the architecture of the soul the knowledge the science of it as it progressed the female form is accompanied by the masculine invisible and vice versa. These are some of the features, for example, of Akhenaten and his queen, Nefertiti. The goddess aspects are extraordinary, but I believe the mainstream has built certain signatures within the context of those archetypes. And what we must do is understand the mythology because one gateway takes us into another gateway. So the ideas of opposites, consorts, triads, this is the real spiritual path work. And so our masculinity, our femininity, these are signatures, these are features which are firmly integrated in our enlightenment. So for example, the throne of the goddess, of course, is the great mother, of course, is a throne of vast and infinite love. However, there is a rare truth, an astounding discipline that will destroy within sacred law. So the feminine becomes active. The masculine is integrated, is activated. And I believe this is very much the nature of incarnation and understanding our life lessons. We are consistently and always discovering that we are indeed the philosopher's stone and we are indeed one. I'd love to teach you. I mean, I do a lot of work with the goddess, but I don't do stylistic goddess. I don't do stylistic ceremonies. The goddess, of course, is much more than the oracle prophecy. But in order to speak what the goddess sees and witnesses and birth, in order for her to speak, we must articulate via the masculine. So this is why we slide between the magic 
of archetypes and we consistently reinvent ourselves, our spirituality, our enlightenment, what we were yesterday is no longer who we are today. For each day is an initiation of the 12 hours of light, the masculine, the solar, and the 12 hours of darkness, dreaming, the unconscious. This is where we are one. Beautiful, okay. thank you. You are so welcome. Like, hugely welcome. I do do a lot of work with interplanetary souls who need to make their home humanity and Earth. Could I ask you, um, Agni, to un unmute and um... You go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. <clears throat> I've been waiting for this call for quite a while. And I don't know, uh, Tracy, if you remember <laughs> me from the previous... Um, I, I do, we chatted, yeah. Yeah, we did. And so my question and sharing will also correlate a little bit with what I shared before. Uh, I want to share what was happening as you were speaking and sharing the message. Um, these things are happening usually... I'm not so much in control. I'm channeling light codes. I'm not conscious of it. My hands are moving, dancing. And sometimes I'm not sure whether I'm activating. It happens that I'm healing through that. Other when I work with clients, connecting, activating something. Or in this case, maybe something was integrating in my system. I'm not sure. But I noticed... Um, blue avian being next to me on my right which is not the first time i'm aware of that um and that energy was like as well somehow connected to you like i remember last time that uh, in our conversation also that was important uh blue avian as a uh, being i'm not sure why i'm sharing this it's just to, to describe my experience and I, I was seeing all of us connecting and, and potentially creating something. I want to believe I am impacting the collective somehow. Uh, I don't have much knowledge, so I'm just sharing my experience. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the question is more like, um, am I doing something that is useful? uh for the collective energy am i because i co resonated with so many elements that you spoke about the queen of light that is by my name was also given by blue avians i received a ball of knowledge where the light codes are coming through and all that is kind of integrating and correlating what what you're sharing i just would like to understand more okay i think that instead of having experiences, we must have experiences that become solid bodies of knowledge, teachings, and wisdom that then serve our integrity, and our service. So in many respects, because I'm very grounded, I can hold you so you can better understand your experience. Right. Often we're afraid of completely giving ourselves to the spiritual path. Right. And often 
we've been pre-programmed by the jargon, the rhetoric of our community. And this is what I refuse to do. I don't follow trends. I won't work with systems. I won't generate simulations that are inauthentic. And it is through my understanding of my own energy, my own soul, my lessons, which are teachings, which is a body resource that facilitates my discernment. Yes, I can activate you. Yes, you can feel something, but I think we must transcend the entertainment aspect. You know, this is why I'm so grateful for my training with some of the finest mediums of last century. They taught me how to work, one, with an iron fist in terms of discipline, so I understood the true meaning of spirit and spiritual experience. If we are truly connected, we know what the teaching is. Spirit is clear. Humanity is not. This is the problem in our community. So there's been a huge progression in terms of our community, which largely is a distraction and creates many urban myths as regards to what ascension is, what spirituality is, what energy healing is. And it powers a very strong, strong trend of compliance. And that's our basic psychology over the last two decades. We've been primed through technology in terms of compliance, which disconnects us from our soul and disconnects us from spirit. Get your own house, your own temple in order. Spirit will not materialize for you if you do not understand who you are first. Excuse me, my teachings can be super strong because I just allow my teachers to work through me. The truth is strong. It's meant to be. It holds the power of the divine feminine and it holds the power of the divine masculine and it is both. You see, the logic is extremely important. Spiritual teachings, energy work should be absolutely concise. So for example, I've got around 50,000 readings under my belt. That includes extremely advanced readings that will contain business plans, for example, solutions, miracles, all of those things. But each session is not systematically staged. It's created in that meeting with that soul for it's my destiny and spirit materializes not because I command it, but because I respect it. 
much more than I respect myself. I love spirituality. I love spirit. I love time. I love contact. I love the ancestors. I love the materialization. When the key materializes as the lesson, it opens another gateway. And so your permitted entry. Unfortunately, our community is gaining first level access at the best currently. It's too much addiction to plant medicine, too many facilitators who are not ethical, too many unscrupulous gurus. We need to go back to basics where we know that ethics comes first. If I start to talk to you about what I know within the context of soul, with what I know in terms of the evolution of the planet, I mean the genetic engineering, of humanity to protect what is now. These are technologies that put our community and its approaches to shame. Why? Because that spiritual wisdom impacts time and the genetics we have today. The ancient Egyptians knew what they were working with. And that's why it is written in the most elaborate and complex languages and symbolism and mythologies. So complex, those who stand in the community can barely understand what it is about today. But this is who we are. This is our soul. This is spirit. This is the real spiritual work. This is what the stargates are. Tracy. And this is why my community in Japan sees me as a gatekeeper, as a pioneering teacher because the Japanese are the forerunners for the new humanity and it is a well-known fact that their imperial lineage originates in Venus it is a well-known common fact that the imperial lineage is indeed extraterrestrial. Tracy, I, I feel that we have so much more to say and work, so much more work to do. Um, and all I can say is thank you so much. I mean, uh, eternal, eternal gratitude. Um, Eternal gratitude to you. You invited me. Thank you so much. I would like to not close this session because it will echo through time and there is no time. However, um, I would ask you to please guide us with a closing prayer and i would like for everybody after that to um speak a word and a gratitude a word of empowerment just one word to embody and a closing gratitude 
obviously we're all grateful to you. So um, let's, I, I, will, I will start. My word is solace and then perhaps do the prayer afterwards if that's okay with you. Um, my gratitude is um, the endless nature of, of, of it all. Um, Carl, can I ask you, please, your word and your gratitude? I think my word is exploration and my gratitude is love. Thank you. Agne. Yeah, my my word probably is mystery. For some reason that stands out. And um, my gratitude is embodiment. Thanks. Anna. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, my word is authenticity. And my gratitude is humanity. Thank you, Anna. Leo. Um, unmute, if you would, please. Thank you. My word is beauty, and my gratitude is balance. Thank you. Shelley. Authenticity and love. Thank you, Shelley. Tracy. My word is God air. And the next is God. Thank you so much. Would you guide us in a closing prayer? Can we all just put our hands on our knees and just visualize protection and love and gratitude for Tracy and for all of us and for this planet? Um, please, thank you, Tracy. Go ahead. May the profound intelligence and love, protection and clarity of light in the gatekeepers across earth, humanity and the universe. And may you be forever connected protected by the love and the light of your own ancestor. May you know you are part, a significant part of everything that is taking place at this time. And may we call the power of the East, the power of the West, the North and the South to bring our journeys into balance so we can read our destiny. Listen carefully for your time is already written if you truly believe.
in your own way. Gratitude and thanks is the closing of the prayer. Your integration, your earthing, your grounding, and your protection as an enlightened soul on the planet at this time. Om Shanti, Shanti Shanti, Om Tat Sat. Thank you so much. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. I'm deeply grateful. To Me all too. Of you. Yeah. Deeply. And um, yeah, I can't. I can't thank you and everybody enough. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, I appreciate your boundless, infinite nature and love. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And can I please invite you to the next sacred segment, which is in two weeks? And Tracy. Um, I would love for you to do a regular segment if you wanted to, you know, just bear it in mind, you know, think about I'd, it. I'd love to, as long as that includes some of my work as a peace activist. 100%. This, this, um, this platform is all about bringing healing and manifesting whatever is meant to manifest in our lives. So absolutely, let's manifest peace. I, I also love it that you're such an ethical and very tight community. And this is where we can do incredible things in small numbers. Love that. So I'm very conservative in terms of who and what I work with because our role is to protect the evolution of humanity. So our work has to be meticulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. What a pleasure. For me too, blessings. And, um, See you soon, everybody. Thank you. Lots of love. Have a wonderful evening. Bye, everyone, and thank you. <laughs>